my dad has been, uh, and many of you prayed for him, I really appreciate that, he has been um, in his first chapter of dialysis. So let's just give you a, a profile that what happens, why do people get on dialysis? They get on dialysis because their kidneys are shot. And kidneys turn out to be uh, one of the secret quiet organs inside the human body that I wish had an alarm system. I wish the kidneys had as much signal to the patient as the heart does. Because the kidneys show up with some trouble and some, they can detect danger much earlier in a disease process. If I'm looking to say how, how much am I going to worry about a patient, there's a couple little tests that I'll do to see how clean their blood is. And there's a micro protein, a super tiny little protein that should never be in your urine. And when it gets into your urine, it's the first signal that things are tearing apart at a cellular level inside the kidney. And if I go back into my dad's chart, uh, you know, he's in his mid-70s now, but he showed warning signs of his kidney being torn apart from the inside 20 years ago. It was a little bit of high blood pressure, and, you know, I we put him on a little blood pressure, but, you know, he's a farmer, and as soon as he would get dehydrated, he'd get a little lightheaded, and then he'd blame the medicine, and, in fact, it was the medicine's fault. Um, but as, uh, as the blood pressure kept getting a little worse and his tummy was never the biggest one in his support group, but, you know, in those late fifties and then sixties and early into those seventies, he got up to about 230 pounds and at six foot two, you know, you'd look around our little small town and he was clearly not the heaviest person. You'd go to church and he was pretty lean for his friends and his, um, his peer group. But indeed, uh, there was too much weight on. And um, if, I could, if I would have known now how to teach somebody to do the ketogenic diet, I would have taught my dad a lot more 25 years ago. And we wouldn't be fragilely discussing, I wonder how the next year of his life is going to go because his kidneys are gone. And... I have so many patients like this. Uh, for many years, uh, their kidneys warn me that something's wrong. Definitely, we need that blood pressure controlled. We're following blood sugars. They're taking metformin. They're doing, you know, we'll talk about cholesterol medicines. All of these are signals that came after the kidney warned me that something was wrong. And what I hope to accomplish in this video tonight is to say, um, if you are afraid of the ketogenic diet because you think you're too old, it's you got too many health problems, you've got, um, you know, you just don't feel like you could do it, um, I would so encourage you to get the book. It's the simplest teaching tool I have. I wrote it as lessons for my mom who wasn't thinking very well. She was definitely struggling in lots of areas, focus and energy. So, you know, reading a boring book was something she couldn't do. I have little lessons about something I needed to teach her one story at a time in a way that could inspire her, but also be simple enough to follow the rules. And as I look at what happened to my dad, his, his kidney function got a little bit more stressed every um, every year. Um, but it was never this wake up, like my mom, she had cancer. She had lymph nodes under her armpits and in her neck. This is a neon sign saying, you have to do something now. And unfortunately, in the world of kidney function, patients don't get that big neon sign. They have little bitty hints that there's a little bit of protein in your urine. You should be worried. And what, uh, what happened to my dad was he sees my mother who he loves dearly he would do anything for her uh, put into a very stressful end-of-life chapter and if you've read the book you know that grandma rose went all in i did it with her and we had incredible success at reversing her cancer reversing her age getting her through a bowel obstruction which is a nightmare and a disgusting but entertaining story that's in the book um, and um, and my dad got to eat sardines I actually brought some of those along because they're part of how I want to make sure I end I don't want to forget that subject to say dad thought he was in in hog heaven like okay I get to eat some sardines uh, this high fat diet is incredible um, you know at first everybody misses the carbs a little bit but 
uh, he really was satisfied as a hog farmer, you know, he's a cow farmer, uh, so we raised cattle and hogs on our farm, and these were foods he loved and had access to fresh stuff without being processed, and he never had diabetes. Maybe he had a little high blood sugar, but, you know, his A1C was always under 5.5, 5, so that's pretty good. Not great, not perfect, but for his age and for his friends, we all said, you know what? This is, this is good enough. And unfortunately, what was happening at a microscopic level, and I knew it, is that each year his uh, kidney function got a little worse and a little worse and a little worse. And over the course of about uh, those 20 years, uh, a year ago, he was about 14 months ago now, he was put in the hospital because his kidneys have gone from 21%. Again, you should have 100% of your kidneys functioning. And each time we do a calculation, and you might not know it, but I put this in every one of the letters about my lab to, to my patients saying, you should know that your kidney function is at 40%. You should know your kidney function is down to 30%. And it's a, a powerful warning signal that says, what do you mean my kidneys are 70% you know, gone? And you know, you can donate a kidney. It's not that you can't live without half of your kidney function but it's a marker. This microalbumin to creatinine ratio, Larry, Larry Carbo is absolutely totally spot on. It should never be above 20. If it gets above 50, beware. Things are tearing apart on the inside of that kidney. And I wish I would have had the skill to teach my dad how dangerous that was for 25 years. Because last year happened, he's in a hospital where I can see we've missed the opportunity to really impact how to, you can't remake kidney cells. Once they're gone, you can't redo I, this. This past week had my, in my support group a, a woman talk about her husband having, you know, multiple surgeries, um, you know, three or three strokes, um, and wonders how to help his brain. And I felt the same loss that I feel thinking about my dad's kidneys when hearing about her husband's brain that every time you put you under surgery, there's not a single study that has come out that says, you kill kidneys, you kill brain cells every time we do that. We put you under anesthesia, it stresses out the brain no matter how perfect the doctor team is. It is not normal to go under the knife. The number of procedures done in today's world, especially in my baby boomers, those patients have suffered with more procedures than any other generation ever known to mankind. And it shows. Their brains are aging faster. Their bodies are aging faster. Uh, the ability to keep them alive has turned into a dialysis center in every corner. Why? Because kidneys go first. Kidneys are that neon signal that says, I'm going to give you a little warning called a, mic uh, a microbial protein in your urine. And that little bitty microalbumin, tiny little protein, should not be in your urine at all. So when your doctor says, yeah, it's a little bit, it's only because he or she has seen 40 of them that day, all skyrocketed, and yours aren't so bad. And that leads me to say, what else could I have done for my dad? Uh, when he got out of the hospital a year ago, I would have said, you need to have this <laughs> three times a week. Uh, these are sardines, and I know I've said this several times, but um, uh, sardines have an incredible amount of good fat in them. They are also on that like uh, advanced keto diet. You can call it carnivore, but it has even lower carbs. It has very little dairy, and it's really intense for uh, the immune system to repair. The other thing I would have told my dad is, he, he likes liver. I would have said, you have to eat liver two or three times a week. Organ meat matters. Go to the locker. It's his best buddy. I mean, he's got people he knows that are the, the butcher. And make sure that your sausage has organ meat in it. It has high fat with organ meat. And you say, why? Uh, because now you're getting even further away from those carbohydrates. Yes, keep them under 20. But when they got into those advanced stages, I should have pushed into a more intense um, I, I like to call it the Paleolithic Keto Diet, but that's a more advanced than I want to get into today. The final thing that I would have done is I would have put him on something called Vitamin D K2. So you might remember a story about my dad over the past year where I wrote him a prescription to go into a tanning bed. 
So vitamin D is one of the markers of health that is also, it's important in kidney function, but it's also just one of those measuring tools for your immune system. It's a fat soluble vitamin. And when it's low for a little while, you've got troubles, but when it's low for a long time, you have disasters like fibromyalgia and muscles that don't repair, things that break that don't get better. You're turning crusty. <laughs> and I mean that by hardening of the arteries. Your, your calcium's going in the wrong direction. And, you know, when we entered into the hospital last year when dad was in a crisis, the chest x-ray, you could see the calcifications on the arteries of his heart on the chest x-ray. But you should not ever see that. The last thing I would do is um, I think I've said on this channel before that I don't do anything, I don't put my name on anything that I wouldn't give my family. So when my dad's kidneys were failing and I saw that I should have given him a, uh, um, a vitamin D K2, I went out to look at the absorption rates for vitamin D K2, which brings me back to the story I was telling about six months ago. Uh, I finally, I had given him prescription, like the really high dose of vitamin D. 50,000 units every day for like five weeks and his vitamin D was still less than 20 or right around 20. Maybe it moved a couple of points, meaning he wasn't absorbing it. Um, I then said, okay, we're going to biohack this and I wrote a prescription for him to go into a tanning bed and um, he got four minutes in a tanning bed. Specifically, the tanning bed had UVB, as in boy, UVB rays. Uh, so there are a couple of bulbs in that tanning bed. And he was this old man going <laughs> into the into the, the the ladies' parlor, he called it, <laughs> to, to get, he says, it takes me longer to get my clothes off than it is to lay in that bed for four minutes. <laughs> but he did it three, day, three times a week for six weeks, and his vitamin D came back at 52. And <laughs> his kidney doctor said, you're going to be toxic. It's gone up so fast. <laughs> and I said, no, no, I don't. You're not going to be toxic. But because it was from the sunlight induced chemistry from the, that tanning bed. But what was happening was um, not only was he in need of some vitamin D, but the K2 part of it is another fat soluble vitamin that's found in fermented foods like sauerkraut, like kimchi, like um, um, what's the one that's all soy? Um, tastes terrible apparently. Uh, anyway, I can't think of it right now. Uh, anyway, that's great sources of, um, of vitamin K2, uh, which improves the absorption of your vitamin D. Um, I specifically added a black pepper extract to mine, thinking of my dad, knowing that his gut was inflamed, his kidneys needed this faster than I could get it to him. And as much as the tanning bed worked, um, he, he's been too sick to go to it for a couple of months, and these supplements are a place not for everybody, but for folks that are in those stages where they are failing, uh, where they're, we have waited too long. And I can give them the prescriptions, but what we're missing is there isn't a prescription for K2 because you can't measure it. It's usually a proximity that uh, when the vitamin D is low, the K2 has been low. And oh, by the way, if you have calcified arteries, that you can see on a chest x-ray, I guarantee that K2 has been low. K2 is one of the, I think of it as the traffic cop for saying, where should you, where should the calcium go? Um, instead of adding calcium, you have, you have enough calcium in your bones forever. But if you're going to add calcium, just do it in the form of sardines, easily absorbable, bioavailable, and your body will put the calcium where it needs to as long as your K2 is elevated, is normal. But you can't measure K2. K2 is another fat-soluble vitamin that if you're eating the right foods on a ketogenic diet, especially a more like carnivore diet, which means less dairy, more, more organ meat, and more sardines, <laughs> a powerful change in how quickly we could see not only can he keep his vitamin D elevated now because of these replacements, um, but he also, um, he just feels better. Now, the, the one thing that inspired me to- Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click the notification bell so you don't miss out on any new videos. Stay tuned.